Now you know more about the objectives of the exciting Inner Food Africa project. And I will tell you more about the roles and responsibilities of sensory scientists here in Africa, but also in Europe in this project, and how we can provide answers for agriculture specialists, economists, food scientists, and entrepreneurs. One of the main aims of this project is to produce healthy ingredients, food products, and packaging materials that can reduce loss. And a very important aspect in this context is that the nutritional value of uneaten food is zero. Access to food that is safe and healthy should be basic rights of consumers. Food and beverage intake has a direct bearing on alleviation of hunger and thirst. Nutritious and safe food contribute to the health and nutrition status of consumers, but access to affordable, safe, nutritious food that are also appealing and acceptable contributes to well-being, happiness and pleasure. I believe that all consumers desire to eat delicious food. What is appealing and considered good tasting is however a complicated issue. It is not so easy to measure or to predict what will be acceptable to consumers in different markets. Many factors influence food choices and consumption behavior. Food should be good tasting. And this is almost so obvious that many scientists and food companies forget that this aspect requires serious attention. Much effort is applied to ensure and optimize the safety, the cost and the health promoting properties of food. But similarly, the sensory properties needs attention. Sensory science is a multidisciplinary field comprising measurement, interpretation and understanding of human responses to product properties as perceived by the senses, such as sight, smell, taste, touch and hearing. In the Inner Food Africa project, there are lots of stakeholders and the intention is to stimulate market demand for food items and even packaging concepts that are derived from the specific crops listed here. In doing so, we aim to create opportunities for farmers that are planting these crops and harvesting the produce. Once harvested, seeds, grains, and other raw materials will be processed by small and medium enterprises. Consumers do not eat plants. They mainly consume products in various processed forms. Consumers prepare meals for families or food businesses will prepare and serve food to consumers via markets, retail outlets and food service establishments. The value chains for the different crops are diverse and complicated, but in the end, consumers will evaluate whether products fulfill their needs and provide them with the desired level of satisfaction. Sensory scientists are tasked to provide insights to different stakeholders all along the value chain in order for them to make decisions. Our role is to make sure that the decisions made will optimize the sensory properties that consumers expect and desire. To do this, we have a toolbox full of tools, essentially test methods and instruments. And the key is to apply the right tool for the job. In the project, we will support by providing training for researchers in the various countries on the use of the different tools in the sensory science toolbox. We will obtain insights and document information about consumers in the different countries. This will help us when planning consumer studies. We will also develop tools and instruments to better understand the reasons for consumer food choices and the barriers to consumption of the crops. Where required, the tools will be specifically adapted for use in the African countries. 
We will also assist the researchers in the project to optimize the sensory properties of the products that are developed in order to improve market potential and also to identify the need for adjustments and enhancements. How do we approach a sensory or consumer research project? I use a tried and tested six steps approach for this purpose. We start the process by taking time to understand exactly what is the question what, that we are trying to solve. What is the problem that we are trying to solve? In step two, once we are clear on the question, we can state the objectives for the research. This also gives an opportunity to identify what the potential outcome of the process may be. Step three is deciding on the plan, the test options and the approach. Find the right tool in the toolbox to fix the problem. And when we are ready in step four, we run the consumer or sensory test. Once we have collected the data, we can now analyze and interpret the results. And finally, in step six, we can take action and make business decisions. And often the results that we gather lead to more questions to solve. Here are examples of typical questions for which sensory tests can provide answers. For example, plant breeders may be interested to know which varieties of orange flesh sweet potato will be acceptable for consumers in Uganda. Bakers may want to know what is the difference in shelf life of a whole grain versus a refined grain flour. We may want to find out what changes occur in the sensory properties of teff flour over a period of storage. And more importantly, when will consumers start to complain about the characteristics of a product? Product developers often want to know how will I know if the new product is good enough for consumers. And in the operations teams, questions pop up like, we are changing the equipment settings and formulation to increase volumes and cut costs of our products. Will consumers notice this? And if they do, will they like the product less? It's also important to find methods to control the sensory quality of products in a company. This brings us to step three, the plan. And here four important decisions need to be made. We have to decide on the methods to use, the people that will evaluate the products, the products themselves, and then the facility or the space and the context that we will use for evaluating the products. If we focus on the methods, there are lots of different sensory methods that will provide different types of information. Some methods are used to test where the products are the same or different. These are important if you make changes to ingredients or processes, but you do not want consumers to notice. Then there are profiling methods that can provide detailed descriptions of the nature and the size of product differences. These are important for product development and shelf life studies. We have a huge toolbox full of methods for consumer studies, ranging from basic methods, for example, to choose which product is preferred between two options, and also then more sophisticated methods that can measure the emotions elicited by different products. Methods to observe consumers, to mine social media are also possible. A variety of questionnaires and scales exist to obtain insight on food choice motives. You also have to decide who will be the most appropriate persons to evaluate the food samples. For some tasks, we make use of a small panel of specifically trained individuals that can reliably describe and quantify the nature and the size of product differences. Within food companies, staff members are trained to perform quality control checks. When we are interested in the opinions of consumers that will eat products, we use groups of consumers that represent a certain target market. And the challenge is then to find the right consumers for the task 
to ensure that the results are valid, one needs to be very clear on the criteria for selecting consumer participants. Various aspects need to be considered when evaluating food products. The ways of sampling to ensure that the results reflect the problem that is investigated. The format in which you present the samples. Consider the quantity, the type of plate used, the cups, the utensils, or the lack thereof. Many foods are eaten by hand, and hand feel is often a very important quality aspect. We also have to consider how many samples can be evaluated at a time, and do we serve all samples together or one by one? Random serving orders are critical to prevent order bias, and how you identify samples that you present to evaluators is also important. Three-digit code numbers are standard practice. And it's also important to consider what information do we give evaluators about the food samples. When you test products, the context in which you do the evaluation is extremely important, especially when consumers are giving inputs. For analytical tests with trained panels, a sensory laboratory is ideal, however not essential. The key is to understand and apply good sensory practices. For consumer testing, a place conveniently located for consumers, a central location may be more suitable. You can also obtain very good insight about products when these are evaluated by consumers at home or where a specific product is normally used. Nowadays, sensory scientists are also exploring virtual simulated reality tools to create context for testing products. And in Africa, there are many opportunities that are not yet explored. Other aspects of importance include data collection options. So what do you use to, to collect your data? It could be pen and paper. It could be observation. Online tools are providing many benefits, especially during the pandemic times. And at times we need to conduct interviews with consumers, especially when there are language barriers or um, literacy issues to consider. Sound experimental design is critical. And the choice of statistics can also assist to understand the meaning of the data. Ethics is non-negotiable. We are working with human beings, so ethical considerations are important. And as I mentioned, language, the language in which you ask questions, the language that you use on questionnaires are critical aspects as well. You also have to consider the staff available, their experience and their skills, and consider the toolbox that you have available. Some of us have very basic toolboxes to consider and we do not have sophisticated tools and then we have to adapt. The take-home messages. The nutritional value of uneaten food is zero. The sensory properties of food are key drivers for consumption. The sensory properties of food contribute to well-being. If you want to solve a sensory problem, use the right tool for the job. And if you cannot do it yourself, call in an expert. Thank you.